Hello computer scientists and welcome to the continuing lesson on assembly language. We've talked about the big picture of how assembly fits into the overall develop software creation process. We've talked about the particular languages and I'm going to have my, uh, my reference sheet here handy so that we can refer to it. And then now let's look at some examples. So after the following program is executed, what is the value that is in the location temp. Okay, so here's how I'm going to think about this. I'm going to think of this as a block of memory, and the first block here is the accumulator. Okay, it's always assigned to this particular program. Initially, the accumulator starts out as uh, blank, and then we implement the program. So DC here, if you re refer to your sheet, DC means to declare a new variable. So in other words, what we're declaring here is a variable called temp, and we're storing zero in it. So now, uh, I'm going to use a different color here. So now this line right here, this, we'll call this line one. Okay? What happens after line one is that there's a new variable called temp, and the value zero gets stored in it. Next we declare, this is, I'll call this line 2, declare a variable A, all right, declare a variable A and place 8 into it. Okay. Same thing, next line, declare a variable B and place negative 2 into it. So this is after line 3. Declare a variable C, okay, and place the number 3 into it. So this is line 4. And now, um, things start to get a little bit more interesting, I think. Load B, okay. So remember that load is basically load into the accumulator. So this means take whatever is in B and put it in to the accumulator. So now, the, so after line 4, so this is line 5 here, after line 5, the accumulator has negative 2 in it. Okay. Multiply C. So take whatever is in the accumulator and multiply it by whatever is in C and then store it in there. So C has 3 times negative 2. So this becomes negative 6. And this, I'm going to, so this is, after line number 6, the accumulator has negative 6 in it. Okay. 7, add A to the accumulator. So take A, add it to here. So now it becomes 2. Okay. And then, again, every time we add, we take the result and we store it into the accumulator. Divide this by B. So this is line 8. We're going to take whatever is in the accumulator, which is 2, and divide it by B, which is negative 2. So, of course, that gives us negative 1. So, the circles here are the, the line numbers. And then, finally, uh, subtract A. So, take whatever is in the accumulator and subtract A from it. So, finally, this becomes negative 1 minus 8 is negative 9. So this is after line number 9. And then store this value into temp. So after the 10th line here, temp has negative 9. So then we're done. So the answer here is negative 9. That's what it will be stored in temp at the end of the program. So there we, there we have it. Um, not exactly a very interesting example, but it gives us some practice into how to interpret the assembly language and uh, you know how this program works. Uh, I'm going to hit pause and then I'm going to jump to the next example where we get to something a little bit more interesting. This example, I've drawn out the memory space over here, and um, I start out with the accumulator, and we're just going to run through this, and I'll show you how to you know step through it and make some uh, and make some sense of it. Okay? So I've numbered my uh, my lines here, lines of code, so that we can refer to it. And let's get going. So first, it says read in n. So we have a variable called n in the memory space. And 
we're going to read in, it says here the, the input here is 3, okay? So n contains 3, and that's the end of line 1. So I'm going to uh, r write the line numbers here in, in red, and I'm going to circle it to indicate that it's the line number. So after line 1, this is what the memory space looks like, okay? After line 2, we declare a variable called a, and we store 1 in there. So after line 2, we declare a variable called a, and we store a 1 in there. Next, you see here we have a label start. Um, now, this isn't going to mean anything yet, but we'll, we'll get back to that in a minute. We're going to load n into the accumulator. So whatever is in n now goes into the accumulator. So n currently had a 3 in it. After we do the load, the accumulator has 3. Here, we, ha we have something called subtract equals 1. So we have to indicate this right here. And so what we're doing here is subtracting 1 from the accumulator. Okay, so this line here basically says subtract 1 from the accumulator. And... Um, this is important, we have to have this, this equals here, because this is part of the syntax. So, whatever is in the accumulator, take one away from it. So, the accumulator used to have three in it, now put two in it. Here, branch, okay, so BE, this is, this is another way of saying branch if accumulator is zero, okay? So, branch if the accumulator is equal to zero. That's essentially what that line of code is saying. So this does nothing because the accumulator has a 3, so we're not going to do anything with it right now. Okay. Store n, so that means take whatever is in the accumulator and throw it in n. So this is line 6, again, line 5 does, does nothing, at least this iteration. So n has 2. Line 7, load a, whatever is in a, put that into the accumulator. So now the accumulator has a 1 in it. Add 2 to the accumulator. So after line 8, the accumulator now has a 3 in it. Store A. So take whatever's in the accumulator and put it in A. So this is line 9. Okay. Whatever's in the accumulator now goes into A. So A is here. Let me extend these lines here so I don't get them too mixed up. Okay. And then finally, branch unconditionally. This is BU. Branch unconditionally to start. So when you're here, without checking for anything, just jump back to the label that says start. And now we go through this again. So load N. So whatever is currently in N place it into the accumulator. And I'm going to name this line here 3.2. Okay, 3.2, this is because this is the second time executing line 3. So whatever is in N, N currently has 2 in it, throw it into the accumulator. Subtract 1 from it. So now the accumulator has 1, and this is line 4.2. Next, line 5.2, branch, if the accumulator is equal to 0, that does nothing. So we go on to line 6.2, store the value of the accumulator into n. So the n now has 1. Load the result of a into, into the accumulator. So this is 7.2. I think I goofed on the next one. I wrote an a in here and I really should have written a 3. Okay, so now um, after line 7.2, load A. So whatever is in A, put it in here in the accumulator. Line uh, 8, add 2 to that. So now we have 5, so this is line 8.2. Store the result in A, this is line 9.2. So whatever is in A, and whatever is in the accumulator, store it in A. Branch unconditionally back to start. Okay, So start has us back here at 3. 
load n. So whatever is in n, this is 3.3, .3, the third time executing line 3. Okay, so the third time executing line 3, load n, whatever is in n, which is a 1, put that into the accumulator. Then uh, subtract 1 from it, so this is line 4.3, and we're here at, we get 0. Now finally, when we run line 5 for the third time here, branch if the result is equal to 0. Well, it is equal to 0. So then we're going to jump down here to RSLT. Sorry, we're branching if the accumulator is equal to zero. So the accumulator is equal to zero. We branch down here to the label RSLT, which has the instruction end. So we go to line 11. And after line 11, we are done. Okay, program is over. Let's go back to the question, which asks, what is going to be in A? So A is 5. That's the answer. Okay. So if you look at this code, it's, help, it's important to try and understand what it's doing so that we're not just mindlessly following through here. Okay. But this is sort of a loop right here. So if you look at this block right here, this is like a loop. Okay. And it's going to loop until the accumulator reaches 0. But the accumulator starts out with n. So it's going to loop n times, whatever the input is. So it's going to run this three times. And each time it's going to add 2, okay, plus 2 to the input. So I look at this program, and what it does is it finds the nth odd number. Because it, it, it starts out at 1, and it runs this loop. Uh, three times. So it's kind of a nifty little algorithm here just to find some odd numbers. It doesn't really do anything useful, but hopefully it gives you a sense of how assembly language can be used and uh, it gives you a sense of, you know, there is, you know, when you write a loop in C or in Java, it eventually gets converted into something like this. Probably something more complicated than this, but if you know assembly, then you can write a better, more efficient algorithm. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.